Hello everyone, it's Bon and welcome back to my channel. Now, I've been gone for most of March and April, but thank you very much for staying. And if you're new to this channel, welcome. I am Bon and I do videos about the visual arts, such as painting and photography. But lately, I've been a little bit more invested with film photography. If you've been following along my videos, Back in December, I got myself a Lomography 85mm Petsville lens after the camera store had it on Markdown. Uh, yes, the camera store with the TCS TV channel here on YouTube. I made a video back then where I tested it using the Canon 6D at ELN2. It was okay with my Canon 6D, but my problems was that I had a hard time manual focusing using the viewfinder on the ELN2 since that camera's focusing screen was designed for autofocus. But I really wanted to use this lens with film. If you have the Nikon or the Pentax K version of this lens, you probably won't have any problems using this with their older film cameras. But since the Canon EF mount is pretty much built with autofocus in mind, I had to do some researching online. My search ended up with me getting a Canon EOS 3 which was released by Canon back in 1998 for professional and advanced amateur photographers. It's the successor to the Canon EOS 5, which is the original 35mm film version of the Canon EOS 5D. It comes loaded with a bunch of advanced features, at least in 1998, such as a 45-point autofocus, eye-controlled autofocus, and a shutter speed of up to 1 8,000th of a second. It uses Canon's EF mount and so it is compatible with any EF lenses, even ones that were released for digital, such as this 40mm f2.8 STM. This is a very capable film camera, but I mainly bought it because you are able to change its viewfinder focusing screen to a split image focusing screen, which definitely helps with manual focusing. I've since replaced the default focusing screen with the Canon ECB split focusing screen and if you're interested in seeing how I did that, well, head over towards the end of this video and I have it included in there. Anyways, a few weeks ago I went out with my sister to Nozel Park and I thought this would be the good time to test this camera with my Lomography art lenses. I loaded the camera with a roll of Fujifilm Pro 400H and overexposed it by two stops to get some awesome pastel tones. I also brought my Canon 6D with me and edited the photos to look like they were shot with Fujifilm Pro 400H. And here are some of my results. So yeah, if you own the Canon EF mount version of this lens, I can definitely recommend having this setup with the Canon EOS 3 and the split focusing image screen. 
However, you can also get a different EOS camera such as the Canon EOS 1, 1V, and 1N, which also has interchangeable split focusing screens. I also think that right now the Fujifilm Pro 400H is my favorite film stock for portraiture just because I really like the pastel tones which kind of gives this relaxed and airy atmosphere to the photos um, which I think is really nice. In the future, I would like to showcase some more of my results using this film. Anyways, thanks for watching this video and I hope you liked it. If you did, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and maybe subscribe for more videos like this in the coming future. And do stick around if you want to see how I changed the focusing screen on my camera. But that is pretty much the end of this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Cheers! Okay, so in this part of the video, I'm going to be showing you how I replaced the focusing screen on my EOS 3 with the Canon ECB split image focusing screen. So I got this off eBay for about 40 bucks, I believe, Canadians. And of course it comes with an instruction manual, so be sure to read this if you are going to be doing this on your own. Um, and it also comes with this set over here, which comes with the new split image focusing screen and a special tool that you will use um, to replace your screen. Um, so you can basically use it to hold on to your screen like this, um, so you don't get fingerprints or anything like that on your screen. The manual comes with a warning that smudges are hard to remove from the screen, so it's just better to use this tool and not use your hands at all. It also allows you not to get fingerprints on other parts, such as the mirror. Alright, so the first thing that you will do is to use the special tool to press on this attachment hook which is located just a little bit below the red dot for attaching lenses. And once you press that, it will basically detach the um, focusing screen tab and allows you to use a special tool to kind of clamp on this tab here and pull out the old screen, which is here. The manual actually says that you shouldn't put it down like this, like how I did it. Um, they want you to kind of put it vertically rather than on its side. Yeah, so now I changed it um, just so it doesn't get damaged if you do want to replace it again later on. Okay, so to replace the new screen, again, use the special tool to kind of clip onto the tab, the mounting tab, and then slowly put it into the screen holder and just make sure that it's in place by gently pressing on it, just like so. And once you are sure that it's no longer moving in place, you can use the special tool again to kind of press it back onto the um, attachment hook to secure it in place. And then quickly just examine that it's actually in the right spot because otherwise your focusing will be off. And I just give it a quick dusting in here just to make sure that no dust is in there. Um, and that's pretty much it. Now let's go and see what it looks like. So here I'm just using uh, the Nifty 50 lens, which is the 50mm STM, which is actually released for digital um, versions of their SLRs, but it will still work with old EF mount cameras. I'm going to be testing the focusing screen with this OWL coaster over here. Um, and this is what the viewfinder looks like now that we have replaced the focusing screen. This really helps me with nailing focus, especially when taking photos at wider apertures. If you always shoot with like smaller apertures, then you probably wouldn't really need it. But if you like to shoot with manual focus lenses on wide apertures, then I think this will be a good investment for you.